It's cup quarterfinal time, and Brian Aguirre's broken again. Hello guys, David here, and welcome back to episode number 49 of Going Into Continental. As you heard in the intro, it is cup quarterfinal episode. Today we are playing against River Plate, and then we have a game against Velez in the league for you after that as well. But before we get into that, I bring you to the screen of Brian Aguirre's medical report. This man needs to be wrapped in cotton wool, honestly. I cannot catch a break with him. He comes back, we play really well, he gets a knock, he's injured for a couple of weeks. He plays, he comes back, he plays really well. He gets an injury for another couple of weeks. This time, he comes back. He's been playing an absolute blind at the last couple of games. And he breaks his ankle. And he's out for three to four months. Fantastic. So that's all good. If you look at us, look at the amount of these. And it's so many things are in a similar sort of area. Twisted ankle, broken ankle, ankle ligaments, ankle ligaments. Calf muscles down that area. Like, there's a lot of it happening. And I'm really bored of it. I really don't like it. I need him to be fresh and fit for every game. But he can't be. Anyway. Since you were last with us, obviously we had two games against Godoy and Talleres in the Cup and the League. Since then we've gone unbeaten. We had a win against Rosario, 2-0, nice and comfortable. No real issues there. As you can see, Aguirre scored in both in the two games prior after excuse me. After the cup game and stuff. Um we then had a amazing turnaround against um Huracan at home. As you see, we went 2-0 down inside the space of four minutes. We then got it back to 2-1. Then it went 3-1. And then we somehow came back to win 4-3. And it was amazing. Bottomore really dragging us through that one, to be fair. So fair play to that man. And then we followed that up with the most recent, with the most recent game, which was a 0-0 draw against Independiente, where, imagine my shock, Ricardo Graffa misses a penalty again in the, like, the 89th minute. Or something stupid like that. I don't know if there's any way that I can see how many penalties he's missed? Is that possible? I don't know. Can we see it in form, maybe? Uh, I can't see it anyway. If you guys know how I can see that, let me know, because I'd be very intrigued to know how many he's missed recently, because there's been a lot of them. It's really annoying. In fact, actually, I think I've had, I think I've had a brainwave, at least in the league anyway. Uh, team detailed. Do this quickly. Where's the penalties one? Uh, I don't know. I can't see it anywhere. Never mind. Not to worry. I'm sure it's around somewhere, but not to matter. As you can see, we're second in the league. Banfield still keeping up their incredible start to the season. Um, as I mentioned, we play River in the first game of this episode in the Cup, and then we play against Velez in the league. So it's quite an quite a key point of the season to be fair. Arguably, two our two most important games so far. And this is the team we're going to be taking out to try and get one over River Plate and get through to the semi-finals of the Copa Argentina. It's going to be Batalla in goal, a back four of Ferroni, Graffa, Machuca and Arietta. And Viozzi is out injured at the moment, if I remember correctly. I can't see him on the screen, so one would assume he is. We've got Nora and Estevez in the centre of the park. Alan Zinho, Bottlemore and Batistuta are all in support of Varela up top. David Llewellyn is... Da, David Llewellyn. I'm going to try that because I've been told off by JDFM for the pronunciation of his surname. Uh, forename was 9 out of 10. Surname 3 out of 10, so I'm pretty sure it's Llewellyn, I think. I don't really know, to be completely honest with you. Um, but he has been dropped to the dropped to the uh, dropped out of the squad for this game, mainly because he's played a lot of games recently. He's actually been playing really well, and Batistuta needs a bit of run out as well, of course. So let's get into this game. Nice little bit of green there to come through. Let's just quickly do our thing here. Are we gonna get a full a full red full sea of greens? Yeah, there you go. I've been told it doesn't matter, but I'm doing it anyway. It's got to be done. Let's get the game underway. Let's get the latest scores up on the screen as well. Not that that makes a difference, because I've noticed we're the only team playing. So it doesn't make any world of difference what's going on in other games. But, as I mentioned, a semi-final spot to all to play for in this game. Although we look as though we're the home team, it's actually a neutral venue. And I'll be honest, I've got no idea where that is. But for some reason, all Copper Argentina games are played at a neutral venue. I don't know why. Not going to lie to you. The Antonio Vespucci. This is the strangest looking picture I've ever seen. Whose is this? The Boca Juniors. Who plays here? Oh. That's confusing. What? Oh, is this the... 
don't know. This might be the. It looks like it might be the national team stadium. I thought it was River Plate Stadium, but I don't know. I'm not really entirely sure. If it is, then that's really unfair. But anyway, I might have to. I might have to zoom in a bit. Here. There we go. Could just about see all of it. Ball across. De La Fuente manages to get his end. Get on to the end of it. Not really a huge amount happening in this highlight, but this highlight's gone on for a while, so River are going to score here. I can call that for now. Ball out onto the right-hand side. Alvarez there. Whips the ball into Castelli. Runs straight through. Ooh, just inches wide. I need it to be there. Then I can see the whole pitch. This is tiny. This is awful. Anyway, Machuca, who's playing instead of Aguilo, I believe is unfit slash injured in this game, if I remember correctly. Estevez to Nora. Plays the ball out to Alan Zinho, nearly gets to it, but doesn't quite manage to get it through to Varela, which is unfortunate. But Grath has picked up the loose ball, plays it forward to Bottomore, play it between them a little bit. Grath is going very far forward, which worries me. That's it. Go back to your defensive position, please. <laughs> he's, getting, he's doing it again. Stop it. Plays in Batistuta because that's what. Oh, that's fine. He's got it onto the board. This highlight's still going. Plays it to Ferroni, who's going to come forward now. He's going to whip the ball in, gets it to Nor on the edge of the box, plays it to Estevez. Plays it to Batistuta, drops on the edge of the loose ball. Is it going in? Oh, my word, how's that not gone in? It's still going, this highlight. It's ridiculous. Batistuta to Estevez, back to Batistuta again. Not saying it again. Out to Alanzino, drips it forward to Varela, who not gets past this man, and Kano tips it over the bar. I forgot about this man, this Kano guy. How good he is. Nora with a corner ball. Doesn't manage to really get it on anyone's head there, but it drops to bottom or passes it to Batistuta. Alanzini on the left hand side now, right hand side, sorry. Estevez bottom or on the ball now loses it, and River are going to break now, and this could be two, this could be one nil. This highlight has been going on for at least two and a half minutes, probably even three minutes in game time, which is just far too long, and it just ended. Weirdest highlight I've ever seen. Anyway, highlight again. Rola closing down the keeper. Doesn't quite manage to get to it. Machuca's on the ball then. Doesn't do the stupid thing by nodding it forwards, even though there's no one near him, which is good. Patala to Gratha now. Plays it to Nora. Nice little bit of interplay there, making himself a bit of space. Nora's guarded himself a, a nice bit of space there. Going to play it wide to Alanzino. He is going to try and get past his man, which he does. Is he going to whip a ball in? Get a ball into Varela. Nearly blocked by the defender. We're making all the chances here, but just not managing to get to it. Oh, dearie me. Gratha's going to get a red card here, is he? think he's gotten away with it we're certainly shading the game so far stats and chances need to probably look at converting one of these though just to uh avoid too much concern although i'm always concerned when it's nil nil because anything can happen especially as a newels fan it seems anyway for only with the throw in plays it to nora all the way back to gratha now presumably going to look to find some space on the right hand side we've got who's that i think that's uh, uh, Arietta in acre space. Bottomore takes a chance and Kano tips over the bar. It's a really good effort that Varela's going to take the uh, oncoming corner. Tries to play it to or tries to get it put to Machuca at the near post. Doesn't quite manage it. Drops up to Batistuta who plays it out to Varela. Terrible pass. Who smacks it into the defender and it goes out for a throw. And then the highlight ends. It's a really weird game for highlights. I'm not entirely sure why. 0 0 though at half time. We've had all of the shots. We've got enough to, do, to win this match. Let's go out and do it. I'm not going to do the whole faith thing. I really can't be bothered. Come on. We have got the likes of Atlante on the bench, which I've actually been doing something that I was suggested in a Discord server the other day in a tactics, script, a tactics chat, um, where I've actually brought Atlante on because he typically plays the false nine position up front, up front, and then it leaves Baltimore to play in his preferred shadow striker role. Baltimore's got a few goals out of it, which is quite good. It's not really benefited Atlante that much, but... Works for Bottomore, and he's been really good form recently, I have to say. And number seven. Anyway, River with the ball at the moment, just into what's 15 minutes into the second half. Trying to close him down, drops to Monzon. Lopez Munoz takes a shot, it's wide of the target. Nothing much to worry about there. I think now is going to be the time. Varela's not really pulled, pulled up many trees in this game so far. So I'm going to make that change I was talking about there. Put him in as the shadow striker up. In the centre of the park, and then he can play in as that false nine. Brings them close together, but yeah, creates an interesting dynamic going forward. So we'll see if that comes to fruition in terms of any uh, any potential goals. See Alan Zinho have a good game as well, which is what we like to see. I am very conscious of the fact this could go to penalties again, as River have the goal kick. 
the one thing we don't have now is much in the way of pressing. Obviously, with with Atlante playing as the false nine, but it is nice to get him in his comfortable position. That just went over the bar from Lopez Munoz. That was a fantastic effort. Oh, wrong button. Wanted. Yeah, get creative. I think it's going to be time for Alanzinho to come off, unfortunately, because he's looking a little bit tired. I don't really know who to replace him with, but I suppose the obvious one is Lucas Rodriguez. I'm actually not going to do that. Not just yet. I'm going to bring on Nadalan in replacement of Arietta, who's a bit tired, but I don't really want to bring off Alanzinho if I could help it, because if he's in good form and he's playing well, I'd like to keep him on the off, on the off chance for penalty, which... Let's just have a quick look through these stats here. Right, the players that we're looking at bringing off. Alan Zinho has a penalty taking of eight. Who else could potentially come off? We're looking at Nora and Estevez, really, aren't we? Penalty taking of seven. Well, seven. I mean, it, it makes no difference. I've got just a shocking team of penalty takers here, haven't I? Um, Bottomore, maybe? Could he come off? I don't really know what to do. Hmm. I'm going to bring Reyes on instead of Estevez and just put him in as the advanced playmaker there. Seems like the sensible one we can get to push forward a little bit. Okay. Rolled the dice. Alan Zinho will remain on for penalties should they happen. Ball in from the corner. Drops to, oh, it dropped in front of Machuku. who couldn't capitalise. Crony with a free throw in now, drops to bottom or plays it back to him, whips a ball in to or towards Atlanta, doesn't quite get on it. He's not really the tallest player in the world, but it goes back to him from Reyes. Playing it around on the edge now, plays it to Bath Studio, takes a chance. Oh, it's wide of the post. Oh, man. So many chances and none of them are going in. And it looks like we're going to be going to the lottery of penalties, which is not what we deserve at all. Well, I suppose if you can't finish a chance, then you don't really deserve to go 1-0 up, do you? So. Arguably, that's the uh, that is the fair result, but they've had a chance. Batala manages to get on the end of it, fortunately. And there looks to be one more highlight towards the end of this game. It's Nora on the ball, ball out to Alanzinho. He has got Froni on the overlap, but he's not going to use him. Reyes is going to play ball through to Atlante at the end of the game. <laughs> it's been saved by Kano again. Honestly, this keeper is ridiculous. Corner in from Froni. Gets it to Gratha nearly. Oh, Romero. Playing it very awkwardly away behind from another corner. Froni again with the corner now. Similar sort of thing to Machuca at the near post. Doesn't manage to get to it. Drops to Grath, who plays it back to Froni, Who's going to try and do something with it. Tries to get it to Batistuta. I'm getting a little bit itchy for this game now. Come on, put the ball in. Alessandro in the back post. It's gone clean over the bar apparently. And that is it. It's going to penalties. We've got a shocking set of penalty takers in for this. And for the second episode in a row... We are seeing some penalties, and now oh, that's as far as, as I can zoom in anyway. Gratha, first penalty, back of the net. Happy days. Mons on now. Vitalika make himself a hero. Wrong way. Doesn't matter. We don't deserve this to be at penalties at all, but like I say, if you can't score, then you are going to. This is going to happen. Bottom was saved by Kano. I mean, if anything's going to happen, Kane is going to have a wand display, as he always does against us, and they're going to go through. That's that's pretty much what's about to happen. As Batala goes the wrong way again. Reyes has really got to score this one to give us any hope of continuing on in this cup. Which he doesn't, and we are going to go out. Annoyingly, I can't fast forward these, but I, mean, I could speed up the highlights, but this is us out then. Oh, saved by Batala. Back in with a chance does mean that we need to have another miss from um, River, assuming Atlante finishes this, which he doesn't. And it's River to win with this next penalty. And the long run-up is happening, which means they're going to score, which means we're out of the cup. I'm going to predict that now. It's been a good run. Got to the quarterfinals. Now it's time to focus on that league until the Copa Libertadores comes out in the, uh, in the new year. So there you go. They're through. Completely undeserved. They had nothing of the game. Completely dominated them. We didn't convert. I'm telling them I'm far from pleased because I am not impressed with that at all. And we're out of the cup. There you go. Less than ideal, but you don't score, you don't go through. Penalty promise. He's been shocking. Yeah, there you go.
Let's try and back that up with a win against Velez in the league. Alrighty then, guys. Velez time. One change to the team that went out unfairly on penalties against the River Plate with Daphid Hluellen coming into the squad ahead of Marcelo Batistuta, who was dropped down to the bench. A couple of changes on the bench. Ponce has got himself a first um, time in the squad for the team. He's recently been promoted to the senior squad. Looking like a tidy player. Plays on the left or the right wing. I'm He's predominantly a left winger as an advanced playmaker. Oof. That's not going to happen. He's an inside forward on the right hand side and he knows it. He's left footed. He's got decent enough. He's got a decent enough first touch. Finishing needs a bit of work, but he's a right sided inside forward for sure. We'll, we'll make him one. Don't you worry. And that could potentially help with our right handed right handed side issues because a lot of the people we're bringing through at the moment are just wingers, which is fine. Got no considerate issue with that, but I would like some other options. Anyway, Alanzini on the ball here takes a chance early doors and six minutes in, we're 1 0 up. Where's that come from, I hear you ask? Well, I mean, we've just passed the ball out and scored, but Estevez with the ball. Kano, formerly of us, has gone with a shocking throw in. Nora back to Estevez. Lovely ball over the top there to him. Alanzinho takes it down. And that's not the first time you've seen him do that this season, is it? Let's be fair. What a lovely finish from the young man. Little young Brazilian boy. Maybe don't say that again, because that might get people thinking the wrong thing about this video. Um, anyway, still got still comfortably the top scorers in the league. Banfield are winning again. I, I'm baffled by this. Someone needs to go out and just absolutely pace them and knock them down a step because they're set, they're eight points clear. For crying out loud, this is ridiculous. I don't get how they're doing it. This is absolute madness. We've not even offered Velas a shot on target yet. We've absolutely bossed this game up until this point. Hopefully, we can continue that. Daffy Llewellyn. Is the only one who's not really offered a huge amount yet, but I'm going to give him a chance. It's good now that we've. It's good. I'm glad. I mean, it's pretty annoying as well though because every bugger seems to be keep. We seem to be generating a load of right wingers that look really good, but we've already got one in, so we can't really do much with it. So I'm just got a giant conveyor belt of right wingers, all of which are being picked up by channel members. I say channel members. You can't subscribe to me at the moment. You can subscribe to me, do that, please, but you can't join my channel yet. Hopefully in the future, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I think Llewellyn is going to have a substitution on his hands because he's not really playing well at the moment, although he has just popped up his rating ever so slightly. I'm focusing on that too much. Alan Zinho is now convincingly injured. Presumably why? Presumably at the same point, Caceres came off as well. That is going to give our man Ponce a chance to come on. And I'm going to try something a little bit different here. It's not really something he's capable of doing. I'm not going to lie, but I want to try something. Because, yeah, look, don't get me wrong. He can't really do this role. Can I click on him? There we go. Can't really play on the, on the right hand side, to be honest. But if we look at the stats that are required for an inside forward on the left, he's arguably got them and he's right footed. So why not give it a try? Who knows, maybe we can turn him into a left winger and then maybe he'll get a bit more game time because he's not one of the million and one right wingers we're bringing through the youth academy at the moment. But it gives Ponce a chance to make his first team debut for the club. Gonzalo Ponce, I think it's Gonzalo. Gonzalo Ponce? Yeah, Gonzalo Ponce. Stop saying Ponce. Ponce. Arietta would throw in then. Estevez to Aguila. He's back in the squad now, back from injury. Of course, he's actually in the squad instead of Machuca. That was the only other change in the team. Uh, Grather on the ball plays it back to the aforementioned Aguila, up towards Ponce now, plays a wonderful switch play out to Llewellyn, who's on the ball now, whips the ball into Ponce at the back post. The two young lads have combined. Gonzalo Ponce with his first goal of the first goal of the season, first ever senior goal for Mules. And it's a fantastic ball in from Llewellyn, who's making that right left hand wing, wing hit spot his own at the moment. Wonderful ball. Not bad from his weaker foot, and Ponce has just snuck up behind the defender there. And poked it into the back of the net. I've also now noticed that the league is properly updated. And we're actually only six points behind Banfield. And not nine, eight. Sorry. So that's a little bit healthier. I think you'll agree. Last two changes then. Let's freshen up some players. What's going on here? There we go. Arietta's going to come off. Because he looks a little bit tired. Let's give Andriotzi a run out for this one. And then let's bring on Ferrella. Who's not really offered too much going forwards. And brings the bios on. And give him a chance to stretch some legs as well. 
I say we're all about giving the guys a chance to uh, get some match sharpness back in, and the best way to do that is to play proper football, even if it is nine minutes at the end of a game. Lautaro Kano not having the most fruitful vi visit back to the Marcelo Bielsa Stadium, but to be fair, he was never that good for us anyway. He was the one I think we thought would be like, decent. Tried to keep him in. Oh, actually, yeah, I've just noticed Luciano Cingolani's back at back in Argentina. I did not know that. He left us for 3.6 million and Nashville have somehow made a profit on him despite him being shocking in terms of ratings apart from one season. But he's back at Vélez. Interesting. Anyway, 2-0 victory. Very, very nice indeed. I'm glad we won that one. I think we needed that. Next game's against Corey Cruz, who we've struggled past in the cup before, as you'll remember from the last episode. And that leaves us second in the table. Banfield just are not letting up at the moment, but we are off to a very, very good midway point, I suppose third of the way through the season, and we've massively turned around that form, which is wonderful stuff. As far as that goes, we're sixth best team now, have a word. Nora's not even in the best 11. Come on now. This changes more often than I change my pants. It's ridiculous. How are we the sixth best team behind San Lorenzo? Stupid game. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it from me. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have them, please make sure you hit that like button. That'd be very much appreciated. If it's the first time you've seen any videos on this channel, then make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know exactly when the videos get published as well. And as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But anyway, guys, that's been me. My name's been David. I thank you guys all very much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.